You got one chin. Yep. Okay. Call this meeting of regular council to order here at City Hall, April 6, 2021. Welcome all the guests. Um, we have an agenda, excuse me, addition to the agenda under new business. That will be ordinances 1080-21, and resolution 2021-05. Any other additions to the agenda? So moved. I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay, are there any citizens' comments this evening? Okay. Moving on to consent agenda. Approved minutes regular council meeting, March 16th, 2021. So moved. I have a motion and a second on the table. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Appropriation Ordinance 406-2021 in the amount of $161,000, 126 and 07 cents. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay, we will start off this evening with the Port Authority presentation. What about presentation? Uh, <laughs> Chad, Carolyn, and I are here representing the Port Authority of Stafford County. Um, we're a seven-person board, three commissioners, three appointees, and then Carolyn. Uh, we've been working on a project here south of St. John um, for a, a rail spur. Um, we have options to exercise two uh, purchase agreements on two pieces of land south of town on the back page of your flyer um, you can kind of see where we're coming off of the BNSF main line and then uh, our proposed rail <coughs> it's basically a, a switch from both directions uh, a bit of rail to our loop and then the loop um, right now we're focusing on on grain because we have a uh, letter of intent with Wind River Grain, their company based out of Garden City, to uh, come here and build their grain facility, um, transport, you no know, export grain out on, on the rail. Um, so that's our main, our main focus is to get them here and, and going, but we do have several other uh, things on the horizon, um, other businesses that I, I, we think would, would go well on the rail. Um, so that's kind of we wanted to bring you guys up to speed, uh, kind of on what what we're doing, where where we're doing it at. Um, Chad's going to talk a little bit about how how we plan on financing it, and and how you guys and John may even touch a little bit on how you guys as a municipality play into our role, um, you know, the project and how we can work together on it. Like Bryce said, we need a little help with some tax increment financing or TIF. Um, First off, there's no risk and there's no cost to the city over this. Um, it's part of municipal law, law that uh, we use the city to run this TIF through because it's a municipality. Um, as you remember, we did this with the grocery store where the property tax that the store generated goes toward the payment. Uh, we're looking at the same thing with this uh, Wind River project on the port. So we would need to run that through the city back to the county. Is that correct, John? Yeah, so um, pretty much. But the, uh, the, the financing, economic development financing tools available to the state are municipal tools. Okay? A, a municipality is just inherently a different creature than a county. Um, and so a lot of this stuff was started back in the mid-70s, and um, as they got updated, 
um, they just kind of kept with the format. Okay, they kept with the municipal format. But what a, a TIF district is does, if you guys remember correctly, is you, you've got a baseline tax levy, ad valorem property tax levy, and then uh, with any increase in that ad valorem property tax levy as a result of the uh, construction of facilities, um, um, construction of buildings, that kind of thing, um, that increase in the tax taxes then are used to pay for, and usually a 20-year process to pay for the bill. Okay. Um, this is a little bit of a strange scenario. Uh, typically, you're going to see this in larger counties, but this is, requires a city-county kind of joint effort uh, because it's a municipal law, but the entire redevelopment district would be outside of the, uh, the county. The city has to do the process. The county has to consent to the process. Outside of the city. I'm sorry, outside it's of the city. The it's in the county. County. The, the other interesting thing is you guys aren't going to get any tax on it anyways. There's no sales tax. It's outside of the city. It's property tax that's owed to the county. You have to pass the resolution um, and then I think we established that, that the county treasurer that collects the money goes to the state and goes back to the county, right? Was that the process that it, at, on the grocery store had warm stuff? It actually comes to the city first in that case, and then comes to economic development. In this scenario, I'm not sure exactly how they will handle okay. it. Okay. I'm assuming that it will come through everything because it, the tip, the way that they've explained it with me, what the taxes is, it all has to come through here. Like they have to wait for it to go through there and then come through here, and then we have to. It gets washed by the state treasurer, then gets washed by the county clerk or whatever. But yep. Okay, but more so, than likely, I assume it'll be the same. So it's, it, it's a financing tool that the Port Authority would like to use to pay for the development, um, but because of the way the statute's written, both the city and county rule requires, just like last time you adopt a resolution, there's a public hearing, and then at that public hearing, you, you pass an ordinance establishing a district. Um, and, and of course, until the development starts, there's no actual TIF. I mean, there's no collection of, of the funds. Um, the the one difference between that and the grocery store, the grocery store, of course, was also uh, sales tax. But you have no sales tax here. And then, uh, so that construction materials were tax exempt, you guys went through the process of doing the or the uh, the project, which resulted in the bond issuance. Even though there wasn't a bond issuance, but that was just so you could take advantage of the tax. Uh, uh, sales tax exemption. Um, Another difference, John, is the, the Port Authority is a public entity. Um, the grocery store was not. Yeah. But I, I am assisting them in in kind of this process and have been since the beginning. Um, they, they did uh, secure uh, contracts for 200, how many toll acres? 256. 256 acres. Um, and, and so similar to the grocery store scenario, our intent is to look to public finance programs and grants that are available for in, for transportation. You know, KDOT has options. We're looking at whether or not there's maybe also some options through the federal government. It's unlikely that we're going to get grant funding for all of it similar to the grocery store. We'll try to get as much as we can, but what that what we can't, we're hoping to be able to finance with that combination of the tax increment finance. So the property tax that Wind River Grain, when, when they build the grain bins, that, that will become a part of the property tax base. So that, and then we'll also be charging fees and rent for um, Though any any of the businesses that locate there, whether it's Wind River, River Grain or any incremental business that we are able to capture after that, will there be private? Or the, will there be availability for private investors? Or are you solely looking at grants and, and funding that way? I don't think there's going to be a mechanism for private investors to um, to invest just 
if they're not a part of the business that's right there. We will. We are open to private businesses. You know, leasing rail frontage from us to put, you know, something on. Right. Um, kind of like she's touching on. We have multiple streams of revenue planned out as far as rail frontage, switch fees on and off of the, the rail, and then of course the tip. Um, we're looking at just with Wind River, uh, eight to ten jobs um, with Wind River, and then thirty, close to thirty trucking jobs, you know, because most of this grain, they're not going to buy a ton of grain harvest time, you know, uh, the grain's going to come in via semi and then leave on the rail. So uh, we're looking at substantial impact. I guess the reason that we're coming to St. John is because you guys geographically are closest. Um, I think every city, every citizen in the, in the county has something to benefit from this, especially in the way of hopefully improve, improve grain prices. Um, but uh, I think everyone will, it, it's a win-win for pretty much everybody in the county. We're not uh, planning on raising taxes to pay for this. Um, we're looking at, you know, our multiple streams of revenue to pay for it. So I think it, it should be a pretty good deal if we can get it in. We're just asking for your help with this tip. <coughs> yep. Worst case scenario, it's a pass-through just like the grocery store. Mm -hmm. well, Worst case. With less paperwork. Right. Uh, that was Jamie's concern. It's because that, of the sales tax, not it, having and, sales tax. And quite tax. candidly, I mean, you had you had uh, you had established the district, and then you had to approve the project. Right. We're going to, I mean, I think we need to look at it again 60 days down the road to see where we are, but it's my opinion you don't have to do the project. You're just establishing the district, and once that district is established by ordinance, then they can, when development happens, they can start to collect that too. Yeah, I mean, that, and you guys, last time you entered into a, 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 a an agreement with Stafford County Economic Development to fund part of the grocery store, the grocery store with your, your sales so, tax, and it, I mean, it's just not applicable in this situation. Yeah. You guys have any called, questions for us? He called and said, do you want to discuss a TIF? And I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, Tell me I'm, more. I'm, I'm on paper. When the time comes, and we need to do it. It's just, the, the awkward thing is just simply because of the way these these financing tools are developed. It, it just requires a city. You just There's no correlating or corresponding program in the rest of the county. There, there's just that statutory applicability does not occur on that side. Now they have to consent because you're using their property, their property and, district on. Yeah. I think it's a win-win uh, scenario for uh, the county and for the uh, city of St. John uh, as a whole and um, I really think this would be something that we would like to move forward with you guys on this. So we look forward to uh, doing business with you I guess. Yep. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to department heads. Okay. Jeff yeah, Williams. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Just, um, just a couple of things. One of them is that um, the Caterpillar engine has made its way to Fairbury, Nebraska, which is uh, the home of be construction that does is going to put the do the install on it and that stuff and they're separating the radiator from the engine and they'll build a skid forward and, and mount a motor on it so it can be set remote like the other engine is delivery date I don't know you know they say the contract says by the end of May we haven't heard anything I talked to Cliff today that's as far as we've gotten so far as to see where we move from there um, Next thing is, I got to thinking, we have no escape door inside the plant. If something should happen, the only door that we can get out of, unless we get clear to the west end of the building behind the Cooper, is out the office door. If something should happen on the, on the panel board in there or something like that, we have, and we lose power inside the plant, we have no way to get out of there. Mm -hmm. So, I got to thinking before we did anything that maybe it would be good to look at maybe the possibility of putting a a door with a panic bar in the south wall of the plant which is probably the most feasible the way that the plants laid out and I asked for two bids and I only got one the other guy I called Jim Low Glass and I was working with that guy and he called me several times with questions and I told him what we would do and you know what we'd expect for them to do yeah I'll get it to you yeah I'll get it to you and I never got it so 
This would, what this would do, if you've been down in the plant, there's three big arch windows in the south wall. And essentially what we would do is take the center window out and uh, frame it back in with a door and as much glass as we could get in there so that uh, uh, we'd have a way out in case of an emergency. Um, and a commercial door is probably the most feasible. I talked to Trent about bricking one in. He said by the time that he got done, to try and put glass in it and that stuff would be cheaper and easier to use a commercial door builder. So these guys could fit the, the size of that hole and do about whatever we want. So that's, uh, that's what I came up with. So it's, uh, it's your decision and your thought on, on what you might want to do. So. That will be out of the way of the new It'll be right south of it's where it'll be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be right in the middle of that south wall is where it would be. It's really the only place we have that we can stick one. I mean, we don't we don't have any we'd have to go clear around that big engine on the north to try and cut a door in there. And this I mean it'll set along side of uh, the side of where this engine's at, but I think it's still probably the easiest way to get out. And it'll be they're gonna set the muffler and the radiator. Uh, right to the south and east of it on the outside wall so it really would be right in between the mufflers and the radiators on those two cats so is where it would be but um, Jeff does this uh, four thousand seven hundred ninety dollars does that include the uh, panic bar yes okay. it does I think the panic bar was like two fifty or something yeah, it says right here two hundred fifty dollars he said we could swing it in it and I told him I said we those those uh, walls are 12 inches thick, and they have brick uh, sills on them, and so we'd have to saw those sills out and then open that up. There might be a little tuck work with the brick. The brick is old, but I think we can get it sawed. We've got a we've got a concrete saw. I think we can square it up and cut it out and, and take the glass out and have it ready for them to fit back in. And he didn't seem to think it'd be too big of a problem. So How old is that building? Oh, uh, 19. 13? Wow. I think that's an additional 250 on that. I think yeah. so. I think it's an additional 250 on that. It might. I, I didn't look at it real close. I brought it in because and gave it to Jamie. In the quote it says MS hook lock and it says alternate one 250 to have rim panic bar in lieu of standard hook lock. So it would be 4790 plus 250. It could, that very well could be possible. 5040. Yeah. Fire chief approved. Well, the insurance man liked the sound of it, and I'm sure the fire chief would like it too. I mean, it just there really is no way out of there. There just isn't. So, um, I just thought it would be if we were going to do it. Now would be the time to do it before the engines put in. And also, um, you know, we go out and around and check that stuff when we're generating, and it'd be a whole lot easier to get through that wall instead of going around the building, coming back around the building. I mean, we do that several times during, you know, to keep an eye on the motor drives and that stuff on those radiators. So. It would help that too, but um, did you say you will be cutting the, the hole through the bridge? We'll saw it. Yeah, I think we can saw it. I, and Trent said that if we had any tucking to do or anything like that, he'd be glad to come by and do that. But he kind of thought we could saw that sill, you know, right square through the wall on both sides, and and probably pop that out. I mean, it wouldn't be an easy job, but it would be easier than trying to cut it all apart and take it out piece by piece so we just cut the whole center section out which is about I think the whole deal is about 63 inches wide which would be the full width of that window and then they'll fit everything back in accordingly so they won't they won't put glass in the very top of the arch of that window they'll use a solid panel for the last little bit it arches about a foot on the very top so make it cheaper to cut the glass in there it wouldn't be arched that way and it'd be square cut so anyway and a half glass door. I told him that I, I thought that the bottom half of that door probably should be kick type so that if you hit it on the run while you wouldn't go through it, you know, you'd, the bottom half would be solid. So anyway, but it would swing out. That way you'd hit it, it would go right straight out. What do you think, Council? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, 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 sure it needs to be in there. I think with the, for the safety and welfare of the uh, employees that work in there, yes, I'd like to see this done. 
Well, if we lose the power inside the plant, we can't get the overhead door open. We don't even have a chain drive on it. I mean, it, it's all total electric, so we're kind of hung on it. You know, we can bail out a window if we can get it broke out, I guess. But <laughs> that's really about the only option we have. I'd make a motion to approve the bid from Quality Glass in the amount of $5,040 for a new door down the power plant. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. The only other thing that I have is that I've got most of the material for the truck parking down to plant. The, uh, uh, the panels, the, uh, uh, the pedestals came in today. We've got all the conduit for the secondary and the primary both. Uh, the cost of the wire, I have a full reel of their primary wire. In the past we'd taken it and we measured it. It's stamped by the foot, so you can take it off by the foot, cut it, and then just pay for it by the foot. Um, if I buy it by the foot, it's two dollars and sixteen cents. If I or two dollars and thirteen cents. If I buy it the whole reel, it's a buck ninety-six. But here's the kicker. I'll need just about a little over about half of it, right at a half of it. Uh, it's going up 80 cents a foot the minute I drop it back up there. And all the primary wire after that's going to be 80 cents a foot higher. So it goes to about uh, almost three dollars, two seventy, two eighty, somewhere in there. And all the wires going up. How much is on the roll? There's about 2,670 feet on that roll and we're going to use about 1,200. So I have a place that if, you know, time forbid and and that stuff, I've kind of made a deal with Golden Belt Telephone of a place that I can use part of that and bore it in, and they're willing to bore it for us for no cost because we're going to remove the poles. I've got a spot down here in an alley that's just almost impossible to get into. The poles are rotten off of, and I was hoping to do it in the fall. So um, that being said, I measured it out, and between that and one other deal that I've got out at uh, Delp Tree Farm, I can use the rest of that reel. I can spin it off there. There won't be a hundred foot of it left when we get done, which would be uh, get some pad mount transformers in. I've got a block down between Second and Third Street there, east of Prairie, that uh, down behind Vance Fishers and down in there that uh, we can shoot underneath all the way through there and put pad mounts in and clean those poles up. The poles are rotten to the point that they're only there's about half of a pole on the end of three of them that I looked at. So. I thought it'd be a, a good place to spend the rest of it and put it underground through there, being how we really don't have any access in there anyway. But, you know, time being what it is, we will see how things go when we get to fall and things slow down a little bit. So I have a use for it if we go ahead and buy it right now at this guy, at buck 93, so, or buck 90, did I say buck 93? Buck 96, whatever it was. But anyway. Get it so the invoice or the total invoice would be about fifty four hundred dollars, I think, for yeah. the total reel. Yeah, about doesn't help me because then we can, yeah, out, I don't know exactly. He priced it out to me, but I can't, I don't know whether I saved it or it's on my desk. We just need the permission and then to buy a reel, yeah, and then I can have the company and the price. I've got it on my desk. I apologize for not bringing it. Okay, so, um, Council, do we need to make a motion to have him do that or just yeah. consensus? I'd make a motion to buy a reel of wire for the truck parking project. What were you saying? Oh, I just. You think you're going to be using that wire for too long, Jeff? You think the first 1,200 feet, I will. I've cut about 100 off of it right now for a deal out west of town we hadn't planned on out at uh, Tom Turner's after a transformer problem out there. But you know, when we get to the point that we can trench that in, can't do it until we get the. You know, I guess we had some problems with drainage on when we when the last rain come through, so we'll have to wait for that. But. Uh, you know, as soon as we can after that and it dries up, well, I'd like to get it stuck in there, so before it gets really hot, get some of that done. 
but uh, it could be you know a couple of weeks, could be a month. I don't know for sure, but but I'll have to return this reel if there's any chance that I'm not going to use it. So, but I thought we were going to put it in until the rain. You know, I picked it up the other day, but then it's too wet to do it. And then after Jamie said we had some drainage problems, they want to straighten it out. So I'll have to wait. We've also got an 80 inch water line that runs through there, so we kind of need to know exactly where it's at too, going to the north. It goes north, back to the north, north ditch. Is uh, that in the north ditch or is that in the south? It ditch? does, and it turns and goes south right down the west fence line and goes into the plant from the north. It comes from the north well around there. So, anyway, we want to be careful so we don't end up on top of it too. Right. But, uh, anyway. Okay, um, I have a motion on the table or any more. Questions or discussion? Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all. That's all I really have, unless you have something for me. Okay, moving on to water department. We have anything from uh, Jason? Yes. <coughs> no, not right there. I guess everything's down below. Everything is down below. All right. I don't think. We, we, we have nothing. We're going to talk about this. Jason's pickle down below. Yeah, the bulk of water. Okay. Yeah, we'll get down there. And okay. then I have truck parking too. Okay. And nothing on the street and park department from Jason? No. Okay. All right. Did we hire our two people? Yes. So Craig and Les are both going to mow. Les um, came in Friday. We're kind of holding off on Craig since he only really wants to do um, like the parks and stuff. Um, so, oh, and uh, I just want to bring it to your guys' attention. I know one council member called me upset. We took out some of the fence at uh, Brown Park and Cornwall Park. Um, they were not, this person was not pleased with my decision, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention that we did make that decision, and I would be happy to speak with anyone that, that wants to talk more about it, but it looks good, it's going to cut down on weed eating time. I actually think it looks a lot cleaner than it used it to. It looks, I was really My personal opinion, it, I heard so. Biden look at it and I thought it looked a little cleaner without having the I think it looks a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. so, I know he wanted to bring it up, so I will just bring it up for you. Well, Put it out there on the table. Isn't that part of your job? Mm, I'm not going there. Okay. Okay, unless there's anything else uh, under water or street and park department, we'll move on to police chief, Chief Adams. I really don't have anything. Um, <clears throat> we had a dinner and a uh, program last night for the seniors on identity theft and scams and fraud. Help educate the uh, seniors since weather's coming up and there's so many scams going on, so we did that last night at the uh, senior yeah. center for them. Yeah. Um, Dustin uh, put on the program last night, did the PowerPoint, did a really yeah. good job. So it uh, it turned out well last night, and we were happy with it. And they, I think they were extremely happy, and we'll we'll do it again probably here next year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns for a chief? All right. Moving on. Fire chief, Chief Sanders. I don't have anything. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns for Chief Sanders? All right, moving on, City Administrator Jamie. I don't have anything. Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns for Jamie? Moving on to City Attorney John. The only thing I have is, you know, related to the, the Port Authority, uh, the Port Authority received some some grant money that allowed them to hire an attorney, I want to say before Christmas. Um, and then this TIF stuff came up. Um, it was my thought that it didn't create any kind of conflict with the city because the city was, um, I guess, benefiting from the TIF district. If somebody feels it creates a conflict, you could just let me know. Um, 
or we could certainly, I could certainly, you guys come first, so I could certainly uh, tell Carolyn that I can't help her with the, the tip part of it. I think it's fine. Yeah. Makes it easier. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather deal with one than two or three different lawyers. <laughs> not sure what that means. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. I mean, I just... I do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. No, I don't have an issue with it. Okay. Right. Does anybody have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns uh, for John? Okay, moving on to old business. How are we coming along with the uh, house number? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I sent out 152 letters today. So, my plan for the rest of this is I will be making a spreadsheet. I believe the letter, I think I gave them until... And I know we don't have to give them any more time since it's already been set, but we're just trying to be courteous. I sent out 152 letters with the ordinance, and they have until the 19th or they will start being fined $5 every day. So after the 19th, starting the 20th, I'm going to have a spreadsheet ready for the police officers, and they will just have to drive around and check each house every day until they are put on. That is the plan, that's what's going to happen, and we'll go from there. And it's going to go off of my agenda. Do you want it on the agenda still? <laughs> How many houses have addresses? Um, I'm not, and that's, that's 152 letters, that's not 152 properties, because a lot of people own multiple properties. And so I just sent it out there because I know I'm going to get 150 phone calls, so it'll be great. All right. Anybody have any problems with what Jamie just said? <laughs> she wanted to send them all certified, not talk to her. <laughs> well, I just know they're going to say, well, I didn't get it. Or... All right. Okay, um, there's been some work going on at the swimming pool. What? Uh... So Warren Brothers, he's been waiting on um, another contractor. There's some cracks in the sidewalls and he's a little bit nervous about that. Um, I think that's going to be our biggest cost um, is getting that filled and he wants to make sure he's using the correct product and, and doing everything. Um, I think that they did a couple test patterns on the, I, I want to say the whole intermediate pool was sandblasted and then there's several spots in the big pool. Um, but he's he's just waiting on the on the other guy. So he said he was gonna try to get a hold of me by today, but for 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 sure he wants to get a hold of me by next council meeting. So we're cutting it close. But Stephanie and I have been in contact. Um, they they've dug out, and I think they're gonna try to get the concrete patch prepped for tomorrow. Um, and then Stephanie has a has her list of things and we've been kind of talking back and forth on on what to get and trying to get people hired before Jubilee hits and all of that. So she's in the loop and she's on board and happy with the task mm -hmm. Yep, she sent me some stuff. We're trying to find um, <coughs> shade, the, the umbrellas that they've tried to use in the past, the wind just tears them up. So we're trying to do some research on what other pools have used for shade over there so it's just little stuff like that so we're going to try to get it looking and working better sounds good okay what do we got on the sewer report so i have included the um quote i guess um from that company that jason had been talking to um, honestly, I, I mean, I don't know anything about the company. I mean, I could read the numbers and the price, but I don't know if you guys want to do the full thing or wait or nothing, but there's your information. Um, I don't know if they'll, I mean, he hasn't really said if they'll mark it down like the, but this is really just the, the bad spots that we had talked about, isn't it? 
or just the whole. Thirty-six fifty-two, second page on the back. Yeah. Oh, it's front and back. Yeah. So these are dollar amounts on the back. Mm-mm. Um, well, that's what I was. Is this right here, 7652? Mm -hmm. No, second page. This should be a page <coughs> like that. That's oh, the one here we go. $180,000. Mm, that was making me. Did you get it? No. I was confused about what this number is. That's why, huh? Yeah, yeah. I just. Yeah, that's all he's one. given me. I don't, and I don't know anything about the industry. Only one year of warranty. Usually those involve uh, a bond which requires them to finish the work, so if they don't finish the work, then you have access the bond to hire somebody else to finish the work. So they get started. information but with this money that might be trickling down we're still not sure of the amount or what it can be used for but um, I know some talk has been about like water and I don't know if sewer is going to be included in it. I, I just saw an article that came out about seven o'clock where we're still waiting for information. On yeah that. so like, I don't know if we want to kind of wait on that. Now does that come this isn't the same company that cameraed everything. Mm -hmm. Don't they do the same thing too though? Don't they line them? Mm, what I understand they do, mm. yes. I mean, it, 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 the, the problem I have is this language that says, the limited warranty which says which are brought to the attention of contractor within one year following completion of contractor's work. You almost then have to s scope everything again to make sure it's all okay. Right. And I, and I don't I don't know without seeing the PD language. What, what was that? Was it Meyer? Mayor. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I can, I mean, I was having, I mean, I was trying to have Jason do that part of it, but I can definitely. I think we ought to reach out to them and, and maybe at least get a quote. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. uh, and I think he, didn't he ask for more than one quote? I, he, you know, I wasn't involved in a lot of that, but I, I, I just. I don't know. I, I'd ask him about mayors, and he never really said whether he got a hold of them or not. But I'd talked several times with Gary Smith from Swab Eaton, you know, and he just, what he recommended was that you call around and make sure that you're using somebody that's reputable because what you're investing in right. yeah. is going to stay a long time. And, and, that, and that's where he came in. So I, you know, when the city wanted to get involved with an engineering firm, to make sure or not why that's that's what they do is water and sewer only so and they have used some contractors that you know and and I think too that that I think word travels a long ways with you know you call around and talk to people that have done work with some of these and they can tell you pretty quick whether they're should we talk with Jason find out if he's uh, heard anything or if he's Got anything from my Mayor's Myers, however you pronounce that? Okay. 
Also, mm -hmm. when you talk to my, or mayors, ask them if they uh, have any other cities that they came with that had some extreme damage like ours and call them direct, call okay. the cities and see if they've acted on any damage. Yeah. There's nothing better than a direct reference. Yeah. Tip, yeah. I mean, this, a, I mean, this is way out of my yeah. pay grade. I can check the listserv too and see if anything's come across. Yeah. There were yeah. some high numbers being thrown around right after that COVID bill mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. I right. think there's a lot, there may be a lot of this type of work happening, and so I don't know how far out yeah. you're going to have to schedule some of this stuff. I think at 180,000, I'd feel comfortable seeing at least another bid. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'd be some fun when that guy's come around too. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna do stuff under the ground that that I'm never gonna see it. Yeah. I mean, that's the simplest way to say it. Right. I do 180,000 dollars worth of work that I don't want. I mean. Yeah. 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 We don't know what their work is going to look like. Okay. All right. Uh, Hey, Jamie, what do you got on the uh, property code violations? Um, I got a call. 808 North Exchange is going to be torn down by a, like, they're doing it themselves. Um, well, not them, but they're hiring someone. Like soon? Yeah, like, it should be down in the next two weeks. Um, I'm still waiting on our volunteer group to get... Is that the one with the split split lot? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, then this it'll just yeah, they'll it just it'll doesn't. be down, and we won't have to worry about it. Okay. It'll be their property; they can do what they want with it. Yeah. Well, that's the one we went and looked at. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah. that's the one that I mean, that could be a little dicey whether it really does come down in two weeks. No, this is North Exchange, not North. Right, North. I know, but North Exchange yeah, is supposed told, to meet you that time or two. Yeah, yeah. well, he met, it, and then he just never called back. Okay. And now the the person tearing it down called me yesterday. Oh, oh, so. oh that's way better. Okay. Yeah, Good. he's going to come in tomorrow and fill out the demolition paperwork. Okay. Okay. I think Excellent. he'll get it done. Awesome. So. Yeah, very good. Hopefully by next meeting I can say it's down. Um. To, um I guess it doesn't matter. Is that a local person tearing that down? Mm-hmm. But yeah. What is the fees for that? Twenty dollars with a sewer hookup. Uh, I guess he's getting paid to do it, isn't he? Okay. Yeah. Um, I went into two hundred nine West First, and uh, I know we've kind of tossed around the idea of it being salvageable, but it is um, beyond disgusting in there, and it's gonna have to be ripped down to to. I don't even know if you want to keep the stud. Like, I mean, it's just gross. And I've tried to contact the one by, you know, by Oh, yeah. Were there any raccoons? No raccoons. <laughs> he, the that guy, he must have got out before the, the guy, went on the, the guy was there and he told me I could go down into the cellar. He's like, I don't go in there, but you can. So I'm, I've tried to get a hold of the bank again. And I mean, all the paperwork's the way it needs to be. I, I don't. I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, it's really gross in there, so. It's pretty rough shape. It's. Yeah, it's still a mortgage though. That's a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But uh, I was trying to get a hold of the mor the company and just say like, hey, like this is the paperwork. Can you just donate it? Like, just be done. They want it for a write off, if nothing else. I mean, it's just, well, dra they, it's just dragging yeah. down. Before. They pay someone to come and take pictures every single month. A guy drives out here and takes pictures every month. Has it got any notice? Yeah, but it, it's a it's a bank I've never heard of. Money. It's in Florida, yeah. And I've called, yeah, I've called. I don't know how many people on it. So, um, the one across the street, I did call and tell him that it's time to get his stuff out, or it could be torn down with his stuff in it. And I think that he's gone over there because I didn't see as much stuff. Four hundred one is the one I cleaned out. It's ready. Um. Both on fifth are notified, and and all the rest. Are, I mean, they're notified and ready. The the two on fifth and the Broadway. I think we're gonna have to be worried about probably personal possessions. Is that the one that got the letter? April first deadline. Mm, two of them. Both of them. Any contact from? Mm -mm. No contact from anyone. So I don't know. Like I mean, I volunteered my time. Well, I didn't volunteer because we were working, but. You know, I cleaned up 4th Street. 
I don't know <laughs> if I'm as willing on the other properties. Because I don't know. Well, they can't be any worse than the one on First Street, right, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, that one? Yeah. Yeah. We told them that we would consider it abandoned at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, do they really have a leg to stand on to come back on us? I mean, they have had multiple That's, certified yeah. letters. It, make, it, they, they can't make money out of something like this. And so right. they have to prove the value of the personal property that was destroyed. That's yeah. like, just take pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, so do you want me to like hire someone to get all the personal property out? I mean, well, I, the, it, the, the problem with you, know, you have to assess that to the property tax, right? Mm -hmm. Every, every I mean, all the work, because I mean, even the work <laughs> that we did over on 4th Street, I have it written down like everyone that was there and how long. Here's so. my concern is they've taken what they want. Right. right. <laughs> And they recognize the rest is junk. Yeah, they've taken everything on value by now. And we've given them plenty of time to get those things cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. But I think that we have to have them empty before they'll tear them down. Yeah. Yeah, because the landfill won't take that stuff. I mean, I mean, how much stuff are we talking about? Uh, I, mean, I bet you two of them, there's probably... Like one 120 yard dumpster or a uh, 320 yard dumpster? Well, the one on First Street, we went through... Three, four years, or four, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe three. three. I think three. Oh, my. Well, what are these dumpsters? Yeah. I don't know. Well, two of them were, yes. Two were the big ones, and yeah. one was the smaller one. Yeah. I don't know how big that is, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like just household items. I mean, I haven't been to either of the ones on Fifth Street I'd, or North Broadway. Pretty serious with stuff in them. Yeah, well, I'm not, I don't know. The one. Pizza from the seventies. <laughs> so what do we need to do to be able to go on the property and find out what's in there? Just law I mean, enforcement. We can do it right now, it's can't my we? opinion. You've done everything that you needed to do. I think we're just got yeah. Because I mean, we can go on the property up. and tear it down right now. So <clears throat> I guess we need to get an idea of what's in the houses. Yeah, we need to go yeah. through them and assess how many roll-offs we're going to need and how much time that's going to take. And then move ahead. I mean, I Monday when Pam gets back, I'll go. You're volunteering for. No offense. You're not. You're not volunteering. <laughs> John's booked. <laughs> I am too. Is that? I don't know. You don't know that's in there. I know there's a lot of people in town that want this house to come down. Right. Yeah. And and a lot of people can't volunteer their equipment, so. Right. You know, Maybe they can volunteer their time. Maybe. Yeah. Um, all I mean, when Pam get gets back. You get high loader parked up there. You just throw stuff out of it. Yeah. My put, thing put your is, gloves on and throw it out the window. I mean, that's why I, I had this stuff, one of this stuff listed on the agenda every week until it's resolved. I mean, it, there's been notice after notice after notice. This isn't a secret. The, the only thing is, is we're going to have to pay to have this stuff removed. I, I know that the volunteer group would like to do it for free, but if we do it for free, if they do it for free, you have no leg to stand on with that property or to collect anything, because you have nothing to assess to the taxes. That's true. You basically but the volunteer group could rent equipment and could rent and pay for the dumpsters. I mean, if you had some volunteer manpower. I'm, I'm not saying that, but like tearing the house down, if you do it for free, basically you oh, cleaned yeah. up somebody's property and they, they right. pay nothing for it. Right, yeah, no, that's not, yeah. Um, you know, but the as far as goal, cleaning out the house, getting the, I'm not saying the volunteer group is not interested in helping. I'm just saying that can I you're get a actually, volunteer group that wants to make money then? Is that what you're telling me? Well, you just hire a crew. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a balance because you're you're not going to be able to recoup that stuff. You're just not. It's going to get You're not going to recoup. Right. That would be my guess. It's going to go to the tax sale. But if you if you just assess them a $500 fine, $500 fee against their property, they're liable to pay and keep their own property and then Five years down the road, we're fighting that we have to mow it every year. Yeah, right. I mean, but none so of these are going to be done for five hundred. They're not. They're, they're not going to get done for five thousand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no. But that's that's what I'm saying. We'll never get our money back. Right. I'm not intending on that. It's part of the whole thing of cleaning it up and making sure that 
if they decide that they want to pay their property taxes, we are going to get reimbursed. Right, if they to. don't, it goes to a tax auction, and we'll just go in and buy it. So there needs the to be an invoice. There needs to be for a transaction time. between yep. the city or land bank right. and the demolition. Yes. Yeah. Clean up and demolition. Yeah. Yeah. We can okay. coordinate that with yeah. Jamie and. And, and like I said, I, I'm I'm not so sure that the Kansas Dirt and and Bob Steinmates would do the work and just bill us for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Build a land bank or build a city. I I don't know how that works. Does that fall under the city or the land bank? Because I mean, uh, they're actually city enforced ordinance. Yeah, I mean, it, this uh, you do you give her an invoice? Do you sign an affidavit when you send it to, to the clerk? How, how is it that you communicate that? Like the, for the special assessments? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I yearly send just a certified number to her. I mean, it, it's all the same. Pot just like money. mowing. I mean, it's all city money, it's taxpayer money, so I don't think it matters. Well, I just know that like the land bank has, I think, $29,000. So I don't know if, that, if we pay that out of the city. Because like when we done the dumpsters on the land bank owned properties, the land bank paid for the dumpsters and the disposal. It, it, yeah, I mean, because it was land bank property that we were cleaning up. For these properties, the city should pay, and if the land bank wants to reimburse the city, right. the land bank can reimburse. The city. We're one step away from being land bank. Yeah, buildable. Yeah. Yeah, because these are. I mean, this is actually city right. done. Because right. it's code violation it has nothing right. to do. Right. That's with what the I was saying. Yeah. This is code violation. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, okay, just as long as we're all on the same page with getting the work done. Well, we need to go through those two or three. For yeah, when Pam gets back, I'll go. And analyze what, what Well, we're that's the, the thing. I mean, the city's going to, I mean, do we take it out of the 1% sales tax to pay these people to clean it up and, and tear them down and then... Let's get an idea of the dollar amount first and we can strategize. So, I guess get bids on what it would cost to yeah. tear these houses mm -hmm. down. And the two cleanups on them. Okay. Just get some good okay. pictures okay. for when you do go inside Five, the six, building. Seven, eight. So, so Forty thousand dollars. Got a camera she can wear. I don't know if I will. You got a camera she can wear. She's a monitor. She made me one with her last time. I had to have someone help her. Right. They're worth your trip. I guarantee you, most of them. And I, and I guess I don't know. <coughs> I know in the past the county has waived the dumping fees, but I don't know if they'll waive the dumping fees on eight houses. I'd be more than happy to ask them. Right. Yeah, I think there's a form. I just need to get with Nita. But I don't know. I, I know they were doing that for just. Take, take out one pocket, to put it in another. No. Right. That's. I don't know. We'll just. I'll just works. have to ask him and see, but yeah. that would save some money anyway. Maybe of course, out. honestly, that shouldn't be our concern if we're paying to have it done because typically the people that tear them down pay that bill. Right. Yeah. So but I mean, I'll matter. do the leg work. Like, I don't mind doing the leg work. I can coordinate with Chad and. and we're all on the same team, yeah. and they're aware. Yeah. Well, What's the two two properties that you emailed me about last week? One was a trailer home. Oh. Oh. Or oh, is that not supposed to bring that in? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a nice secret. It's not a secret. <laughs> so I have an idea for housing, um, and I'll just throw it out there. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> so there, by the, by the tire shop at the co-op, there is a lot um, with a trailer on it. It's been for sale. We mow it, or used to. And then there's another one on the corner of Monroe and, <coughs> is it Hooley down there? Like Bob's Rock Pile. It's, it's just straight north of that trailer house on the corner. Yeah. Like right in right next to Scott Clausen's on the, across the street building. So those two pieces of land are, are owned by the same person. And I know that there have been people talking about um, getting kind of like nicer modular homes. And I was, um, I, I talked to the guy and he talked like he would be willing to sell. Um, so I was going to have John do some background check on it 
and then do, look up the zoning stuff and all of that. But I guess I just wanted to bring it to your attention so you guys can be aware. Um, I wanted to kind of have more um, planned out and, and talk to a few more people um, before I brought it because I don't have, I mean, I don't have a plan at all. I just, You're I know. You're just trying to help coordinate some new construction in town? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about it. We talked about First Street. Marshall and I have talked about First Street, and then... Um, we had also talked about the land bank buying the property instead of the city buying it. And then maybe even the even financing, so, you know, the city wouldn't be landlords if we had a rent-to-own contract. The, the owners would be, or the new owners would be responsible for the upkeep, and but we would still have the contract as... You know, you, these have to be kept up and can't torn apart and look crappy. So, just a way to have a little bit more middle. You know, there's there's low in not, not low income, but there's twenty thousand dollar houses and a hundred thousand dollar houses, and there's not a lot of in between. So, and those lots, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the measurements or anything, but surely you could get three or four. Maybe two or three or four. I don't know. I don't if know how much park, we're If you put them like they do in Wichita, you can get a whole bunch more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's enough have, to get a riding mower in between them, but, and that's it. I mean, it, it would if we're you know if we're doing this port authority, and I have people all the time asking for housing, and it just I don't know. It's just an idea, and I know um, a lot of people have talked about. I know people don't want a trailer court per se, but. Um, I was just going to look at the, the zoning regulations and see what we could do for for some options and I don't know. I don't know if it's even feasible, but well, thank so you, Joan. It, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a good plan. <laughs> put, get more stuff put together and then bring it back to council. Yeah. All right. Okay, moving on to truck parking. <clears throat> so truck parking lot, um, we had it surveyed. Jason took that thingy out there. And the ditch is three three inches higher than the west culvert. The bottom of the ditch is three inches higher than the west culvert. 281 ditch is three inches higher than the west culvert. I'm assuming that's at the bottom of the culvert. Yeah, it's like this big. Not very big at all. But I called KDOT and I'm waiting on a call back. Good luck. They've called me back before. I called them I know when it rained a lot, that water was less than 100 feet from the ditch on 281. You probably could have went out there with a shovel and in 30 minutes dug it 100 feet and made that water somewhat drain to the big ditch. Now, I could be wrong, but that's what it looked like to me. And I honestly think after looking at the surveys, we need to take our right-of-ways out there and widen that road mm -hmm. and relocate our culverts and relocate the south ditch and shoot it clear to the east side. That's the, that's the state's fill-in. Or we think we're, we're no. talking like that's the state. How can that? What what does that have to do with the state's approach? I think well, the state has a right of way, and their right of way probably comes back onto our dirt road so far. Right, right. I know, but I mean, we don't have to coordinate anything with them on I'm working on that approach, do we? I wouldn't think. It so. doesn't come off. I mean, it comes I was just off our road. The, right. the worst case scenario is if fishers want a driveway off of the dirt road into that field, we put another culvert in there. Mm -hmm. Right. So the water can go underneath their driveway and shoot it, and, and which we'll probably have to give them access if we dig that ditch any deeper, because then they have no access to their field, other than through the ditch. And I don't know if they want to pull equipment through that ditch. But it wouldn't be hard to just go down there and, and take our right away on the south side, and I think we even need to take it on the north side. That fence needs to come out on the north side, and that ditch needs redug. And that road needs widened, but the ditch is out further. Yep. Who farms that? I don't know. 
That's one I don't have. It's, it's uh, well, I, I don't know, do Hager. It's Hager's ground. I don't know who's of the. Gregory. Fisher. Fisher. <clears throat> but, I mean, even at that, I mean, our right of way is not that much into their field. It's got that old five wire fence up there. Yeah, it's just on the. Yeah. yeah. I guess they would talk to Jason and figure out for sure where he shot it at. I mean, there's no point trying to run that way if you can't get in the ditch. Yeah. Um, well, I think I, you I can, but you might end up with a ditch like on West Street. Right. 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 Fill the ditch up. Yeah. But I'm just saying, we need to talk to him and figure out for sure because I, mean, I can't just stand there and say, let's go go to the ditch. Not He's not feeling well. He said he was going to take medicine. But you never know if you move if you move that ditch to the south and get it back further on our right of way, wherever that measurement is in that ditch, it might be deeper there too. You know, if it's another ten foot south, that ditch might drop down another it might be lower back there further. Because yeah, I'm sure he just, was just, we just going somewhere. A, a topographical map from, from our west driveway to the state. We need the elevations at the bottom of the ditch. Every hundred foot. Yep. And we need it all road out to know what we're doing. That's yeah. that's my opinion. Because our ditch isn't level. You can go out there and watch the water drying up right now. And we got low spots in our ditch. Mm -hmm. So we we got ups and downs. I, I drove by it ten or fifteen times when it was raining, and uh, I, I I tend to agree with Marshall. I I think it's it's going that way. It's way closer than we think. But maybe on the other side of the state's ditch, it is higher through the culvert or through the fill-in because nobody's good enough to see that through their eye but right. it looks like it would show sure work in my opinion i think it was within 50 feet and it could have been there. i mean yeah so might be a dumb question do you hire to get that done or is that something that you do with that with transit the transit, the transit. Yeah. I mean, they can just, they can set Either it in the way, bottom of the yeah. west Bottom ditch. of ditches is what he said. That's what it takes. Okay, yeah. yeah. But he can just go every hundred feet and get us okay. all the way down. And it sure wouldn't hurt to go almost to our right of way in the bottom of that ditch and find out what it is there. Because if we move that back to the to the south, move the ditch and everything, and widen that road. It's actually going to, it could be deeper than what it is now. That's going to get intense doing that. <coughs> I mean, are we capable of that with our greater? Uh, we may not be able to. I don't know. Right. I don't know. I mean, that's it. May be one of them things we just have to right. hire somebody to come in and and because there's going to have to be a lot of dirt moved. Yeah, I mean, that's two or three graders and pushing around. That's a county overhaul major deal. I mean, yeah. We need to just let's look at this first and just make sure we can get it there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, what do we got for a media mm -mm. night trip? Man? That's just on there to just remind us there. that it's going to come. Sometime we're going to have to pay a hundred thousand dollars for media in the year. I don't mind that one being on there. Jeff yeah. kind of gave you the update for the power plant. Right. Yeah. And then the bulk water project. Um, you have two. The well, they're not two different quotes. The email quote is for um, Rosencrantz Bemis for the well, and then um, the Elmec is for the system. So in a rough around about way, it's thirty thousand dollars. Correct. This Rosencrantz deal should. I don't know. I don't want to say that seems high. But does that seem high? They got to pull that old one out. I don't know whether that's part of it or not because I wasn't involved in that, but I know all that stuff has to come out. Yeah, it says pull pump from existing. Right. I, on this above price is an estimate only actual charges will be based on. Can, can you investigate that a little more and then also maybe get another bid? Maybe, I don't know, Clark or. Uh, you guys do that? Yeah, we put in for sure pumps that big. Um, we can pull it. I don't know. You know Just investigate that a little bit. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I guess. I mean, we're kind of, in a way, we're updating, but yet we're downgrading. I mean, on our capacity a little bit on the equipment side. The and I was just shocked on that. The way that you have to pump it is a little bit different than right. what we've done in the past, yeah. I mean, I don't know what everybody else thought. But I'm assuming this, 
stuff here matches for what they're going to do here. I'm guessing. I, uh, I started that deal a long time ago with that portal I mean, logic and then it kind of got drifted yeah. off and we had to file with the state. And, uh -huh. So Jason's kind of taken the rest of that. I haven't seen it. I can't tell you. But I believe that he got the, the Brian and Troy talking. So they're so Jason gonna have to be the middleman. So I will, I will see what I can do and get a couple more quotes for the next meeting. But this also, and I don't know whether you guys realize this, but right now we we send out down there treated water. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This this isn't a um, maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but this isn't a money making opportunity. It's a quick selling treated it's a water. Track, it's a tracking type deal more than anything yeah, that's because we get to track. Have way to track that water that comes None at all. Other than it's they it's an honor system deal water. right now. We transferred uh, several acre feet off of that west well so that we could have the ability to pump that out even though that well's high in nitrates. Right. But we wanted to get that cut off so that we got the nitrate plant completely away from that well because right. the fire department could use it and you know and everybody else too. So. The county fire department want to put a little money towards this? But also we don't, I mean maybe I'm not thinking of this right, but we don't have to do like, I look at this 15395 as like a car troll Right. And that's what and, it is. Right. That's what it is. But we could we could step that down to something similar simpler, more feasible, couldn't we? Uh, or we've yeah, looked at some we've looked at several things, but most of them require somebody to be there to give you access. That's yeah. that's what we're trying to get away from. Right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I guess what I mean is we're never gonna sell thirty thousand dollars worth or this fifteen three ninety five, I mean if we ran the math on the payback for that it's not gonna, in my lifetime. Maybe not maybe not anybody that's alive yet's lifetime. So what do we sell water bulk water for? It's next to free. <laughs> I mean the the reason we're doing this is to quit giving away treated water or selling to quit selling treated water, right? Yeah. Well that yeah. we well, want to track it. Right. We want that's a big thing down on our nitrate plan as well. Yeah, we think there's several I mean. million gallons going through there that we're not being able to track and at in the end of the year when we have to write down we have to go through our water reports, we have no way to track what's been through there. Right. Now we know several entities that fill up out there and never write it down. So Yeah. Yeah. Our bulk water is like six dollars and ten cents per thousand. thousand. Yeah. But, so but after free. this is done, you know, it's all it's it's all hooked up. Um, it won't cost very much to pump that water out of the ground into the truck. You know, it's basically no. it, paying the initial cost of what it costs to put it in. I have yeah. it all wrote out. Yeah. And you'll be able to track the, the gallons. Yeah, and that was the thing was to be able to track it clear down to know exactly well, how much we've gotten rid of. And we might actually be shocked if if we put this in of how much actually goes out and how much we weren't getting paid mm -hmm. for. So it might be a complete difference. We know several it. million gallons that leave in the year's time. Yeah, that way. I guess what I meant is if we updated it with this Rosencrantz 14,500 and we put a, 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 an overgrown micrometer water meter or whatever in there is, we could still monitor it, still somewhat use the owner system or, or make it more accountable Right. that avoids a $15,000 car troll that, I mean, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, this, when I look at this as an investment here, it's not a money-making investment. Right. And, and then also, I don't want to have it where we have a $15,000 car troll that doesn't work or the card isn't right, and then we're paying $1,500 to have somebody come out because our $15,000 car troll isn't working. Correct. I, I don't. Maybe I. We I we borrowed know. some poles from Ellenwood and took them back here a while back, and they use a system up there. And most of the time, they don't have access inside the power plant, but they use keys. Yeah. And meters, and the meters are by the minute. They know how many gallons a minute that well pumps, and then at the end of the month, they just tally those meters, and you get billed for this many minutes, and you know we've pumped how many thousand gallons, you know, and that's what you get billed for. And it's a whole lot simpler. Right. And just like them old, like them old keys that were in pot machines, right? That type of a deal, you know. And the water guys, they had, Joe had this one, and Ross had this one, and this is what you know. I mean, it's a whole lot simpler. Does the same thing. Well, I was thinking this is. But you have to kick the the trick to that is you have to kick that pump off and on every time you do it. See, right? Because it doesn't have any kind of a cushion to be able to hold that water where it does with city water, you know. 
Well, I was even thinking so, like a like a, an ID pad that you know. S&S sure. tires number one, you sure. get a number assigned to you, sure. you punch it in for like your login, right. and then you still are on the honor system, but we have it metered, uh -huh. and we'll, we'll figure out within a month yeah. somebody's lying. Exactly. Sure. Or, or, and, and also, uh, we're not going to be, we don't care if we're a thousand gallons off, we don't want to be a million gallons off. Exactly. And, and maybe that system. This was just something that caught us that was totally maintenance free. Right. You know, that's the whole reason that we started right. looking at that one, and it seemed to be the most widely used in places where they have a lot of tank trucks and haul a lot of water. So right. that was the whole reason we looked at is that, that and water, no other reason. Is it metered down there now? <laughs> what no, comes out? No. No, no that, the, meter, the so meter's easy. on the pump side, see? It's not on the flow side coming in. It was after, because it comes in through the well house, it goes up to the riser and there's just a valve there. The meter's over on this side attached to the pump. So. But, but and the pipe is in really bad shape. I mean, it's something that's going to have to be repaired or replaced. I mean, redoing that and making it meterable is, is easy. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's sure. beyond easy. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just... Could yeah. something, you know, like the um, car washes, I think, like, companies can go type in their code, and then it just keeps a tally and builds Right, it. yeah. That, yeah. It, and and even if that's like not that? linked with the meter, which, like what you're saying, is linked with, like, the timer, even if that's not linked with the meter, if we just did a monthly meter or a quarterly meter, we, there's not 25 different people down there using that. Yeah. I mean, occasionally we get a new one, but there's 10, 10 or 12 people maybe that are the habitual users. The big maybe, thing maybe is just five. being able to kick that pump off and on and have the cushion to right. be able to shut right. it down without tearing the pump up from a hammer, yeah. you know. I did do the math. So. Yeah, you don't want to know, do you? Yeah. That's right. That's what I, I mean, I'm, I don't know the cost. I just know it's way yeah. down. Yeah. Sure. And I just, I just want us to be realistic about it. And the goal is not to make it where we're going to make a bunch of money selling bulk water. It's to quit treating water that's going down an oil field hole or going yep. in a spray or whatever. So. Or out on the dirt roads for the county. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway. Or a cow tank. I mean, we have a lot of guys do yeah. that in the winter time. You know. Yeah. Uh, I've used it when I was in a pickle. I'll get back to you. Yeah, just keep on that if you're with All right, moving on to new business. Mowing for Land Bank. I talked to um, Angie Hansen um, about mowing South Main and the properties on 2nd Street. mow all of those for $125 a time. She doesn't think that the the south property is it? The one next to John Paul's. Yeah, the one next to John She doesn't think that we'll even need to mow that because it's not very level. Dirt needs to be hauled in. Um, but she said she'll just do it all at once. I'm going to have the, I put in a request for the cleanup day to get some kids over there and try to like just kind of walk through and get the debris. Um, and I think there's some cement and stuff. Just make sure that it's that it's cleared and and ready for a mower to go in there. Um, but I didn't know if the land bank needs to pay for that, or if the city needs to pay for that, or how this is going to look. For the My question was, John, do we have to put it out for bid, or can we just hire someone? Huh? No. We can just hire someone. My question was, was, does the city want to pay for it? Or does the city want land bank to pay for it? It is land bank property. Or we just want to, to, to keep all that separate. Well, that that was properties. kind of, yeah, right. that was kind of my thought on it. And I just told Jamie, bring it up. We'll decide. I feel that the land bank is their property. They ought to pay for it. And if that's the case, we'll have a land bank meeting and, and do that. I'd like I didn't to try to keep as much of it separate as all. Not, not that the city will help. We can try to find Well, in the past, the city has been mowing the land bank's properties. So that's yeah. why I just had it put on there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll schedule a land bank meeting. Okay. Yeah, I
Okay, moving on to ordinance 1080-21, an ordinance amending articles 1 and 2 of chapter 2 related to animals at large and repealing sections in conflict therewith. So the best way to explain this is the two pages that were in your packet that Tori wrote up for the protocol with the police department. Um, when they do have a dog at large call and their their new process on on taking care of that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, we're we're just trying to cut down on the number of people that show up to be this We have a lot of dog calls and it gets we've gotta do something. So this is our our answer. It's kinda like treating it like a speed. Like it's all laid out. Pay it. Don't want to let it. Get their dog back. They want to show them find it. They can do that too. Right. It's just, it's basically more lined out. This is, this is what needs done. This is the fine amount. This is the court cost. Because before, I think it kind of read like the judge could, could waive the court cost if she wanted. It, like it was a must appear, and right. it just box court. Pay your court fee down. if you don't agree. You show up in court. Yep. You don't have to show up in court. Yep. And there's a, a, a fine schedule. You know, if it happens once, up to four or more. You know, it's all in there. So, so it's just. $30, plus the court costs? Mm -hmm. How so much is court costs? $100. Oh, my. But it used, and it used to just be like, it wasn't the same way. Right. Yeah. Because we have just a picture of my dogs and I've run them. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sure. So I ain't claiming them. That's the worst part. I didn't want to say that. That's the worst part. You feel bad for the dog because I don't want a dog to not pick that because. Yeah, it's typically like we see the same people. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I mean, but it's still the officer's discretion. And, yeah. and a lot of people object. I'm not thinking about yeah. that they're just here because they have to. Yeah. And then they pay five dollars a month for the rest of their lives to pay off their fines. Or yeah. the judge has issued bench warrants when they don't appear. Boy. Yeah. They should not have a dog. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Okay. So I guess if you think this is fine. It, I, I'm trying to modernize some of this stuff, right. and I will yep. say that I, I didn't reinvent the wheel. I'm not, I've I mean, made like what other Pratt cities something's did. got something very similar. I, I don't know. I have another dispute with Pratt because Pratt likes their animals to run at large. <laughs> but uh, you're going to take this to Pratt, show sure. uh, Maybe, but no. <laughs> I, I think a lot of this comes from Hayes. So Tori said Lauren kind of Lauren. I, I kind of pick and choose from, from other cities things I like. Right, unless we got any other questions regarding uh, ordinance 1080-21, I entertain a motion to approve. Do we think we're going to get some pushback from that? I guess. Okay. So moved. <laughs> I have a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. The vicious dog there, I, you know, it is rewritten to clear a few things up and... Yeah, I kind of look at this as first degree bad dog and second degree bad dog. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the way it was written before, we just got into these long, long battles with, with a dog that you know, may have just been upset that day. I mean, I, I, I'd like to, if, if it's a vicious dog, I want law enforcement to be able to take care of it. I, I want there to be something resolved right away. If it's a, if it's a dangerous dog, I want, to, want the, the homeowners to have to go through additional steps to contain that dog. Because again, it's, it seems to be repeat offenders and police chiefs can speak to some of us. We're just trying to, where we see there are issues, we're trying to correct them, streamline the process, and, and make it less dependable on uh, municipal board. Okay, this is a 
about the third time I've been through dog ordinances yeah. since I've been on the council. Yeah, so. I think, I think, what was it, 1991, this is all over, correct? And I think we've updated them all. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Vicious Dog is newer, or the Breed Band, or whatever it was like. We did Vicious Dog instead of the Breed Band, or whatever. Breeds. Yeah, I forget the term. So, Council, do you have any more questions, comments, or concerns regarding Ordinance Number 1081-21? Okay. I'd make a motion to approve ordinance number 1081-21. Second. Got a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. And the reason why we do the resolution is specifically so we don't have to pass an ordinance every time. Resolutions don't require publication. So uh, the impact fee has to be done by resolution. That's the main thing as far as this 20, 21, 04. Five. 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 Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I know March does too. Yeah. Does yours say 04? No, it says 05. Something happened there. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, but I had all the numbers on that document you only have one page of. Yeah, I didn't have any of those. <laughs> Make a motion to pass resolution number 2021-05. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the table. Are there any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. That takes care of all of that. Okay, we have a 10 minute executive session to discuss employee valuations. Who do you want in there? Everyone around the table and the chief. And the chief. If they're police. So moved. I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carriage will resume at 8.32. I'll be glad. Thank you. Okay, call this meeting back to order. Um, having uh, needing an extra five more minutes, I'd ask for five more minutes under the same executive session to include the same people. So moved. Okay. Have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Sorry. Motion carries. We'll resume at 837. They told me, I'm like, Ross, don't get out of the truck. Call this meeting back to order. We have another 10 minute executive session to discuss attorney client privilege. I'm assuming everyone around the table. That's yeah. it. Okay. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Motion carries. We'll resume at 847. Call this meeting back to order. Do we have anything? Yeah, do we have anything to do? I'd make a motion to give Preston Nemec a raise from fourteen fifty to fifteen dollars per his evaluation. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay, we have. Hold an, on, hold on. I got another. Oh my! Excuse me. I'd make a motion to give Tori Perez a raise from eighteen dollars to eighteen fifty-four for her evaluation. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, going to do. Are we going to do B fifteen or are we going to do ten? Ten. Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, we have a 10 minute executive session to discuss employee performance to include everyone around the table and including the chief of police. So moved. Second. A motion and a second on the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. We'll resume at 8.58. We've got the greatest chance in the state. Call this meeting back to order. Uh, I'm going to need an additional 10 minutes um, for executive session to include the same people. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. We'll resume at 9.08. Okay, I 
I'll call this meeting back to order. Having no more business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Raise your hand. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.